Welcome to Angling Outlaws, the show where we're taking four elite former footballers, dropping them outside their comfort zone and setting them challenges. Yes, this is angling, a sport that is technical, but where much of the play is going on under the water, where they can't see it. So it's as much about understanding and solving problems as it is about physical ability and skill. Our target is to take four footballing legends and turn them from absolute beginners to experts in just one week. They're not on their own though. They've got four of the best anglers in the country showing them the ropes. So far, the guys have learned how to catch and handle fish and also how to fish with a float. But today, things get a bit more technical. Sometimes the fish can be a little further out, so they need to be able to cast further out to get to them. Now that requires a bit more power. So today, it's learning about how to reach that extra distance with a feeder or a ledger. Well then everybody, we've had a great day yesterday, but today you're going to embark on the next chapter of your angling story. And this is where you're going to learn rod and line fishing, but not with a float. As Robert said, you've still got the same aspects in terms of a rod and line as yesterday, float fishing, but today is all about feeder and bomb fishing. A feeder essentially is a small parcel of pellets and attractive bait, which you cast onto the bottom of the lake. The fish come round and hopefully you hook one. The bomb, the only difference is there's no bait around it. But essentially the method is fishing on the bottom rather than up in the water. And in terms of bite indication, yesterday you were watching a float dip under the surface. Today you'll be staring at your rod tips, waiting for them to pull round, which indicates that a fish is hooked. So there you go. That's it. It's going to be a great day ahead of us. Back to your boxes. Show us what you can do. triumph for Frank McAvenny. A great pass by Keane, but McAvenny's finish for his first of the season is pure class. West Ham fans will hope it's the start of better things to come from the Scotsman. There's so much that we've been doing this week, so it's, there's a pole, there's a casting out, and getting the fish in, taking the hooks out, and, you know, and making sure you don't hurt the fish. That's, that's, that's uh, all good fun. I didn't think I would take to it the way I am, but yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I says at the beginning I've got a great teacher, so she's doing very well for me. She likes to win, so do I, so that's good. Right, what's a method feeder? So this is your method feeder. Okay. So you have your pile of bait sat around there with your hook bait sat right in the middle of it. So we've got this thing here which is a, a method feeder mould. So that moulds your ground bit around it. So the way in which we do it is we sit a pellet in the bottom and then your bait. So here we've got some ground bait and pellets. Uh -huh. Put them over press it down a little, and then whether the hook length comes out, you fold it over, sandwich it, and then you squeeze the method into the method mould. Using Give it a edges. good press. Yep, using the edges. Uh -huh. And then if you turn it over, it's like a button, is a, a big blue thing. Put your fingers either side, press the button, and come your method feeder will come out. So, okay. so now you can see your pellets in the middle of there, yeah, yeah. your hook there, so that lands on the bottom. Starts breaking away, the fish come peck at it and it's fish on. Okay, right. There we go, so. I'll just put this out then. So if you just cast it out. Mm -hmm. So we line up with a far bank marker, so we've got a Christmas tree in front of us. Well, it's pointy, it's not quite a Christmas tree, but it's pointy, we know where we're yeah, on we about. Know we're, we know what we're talking about. Line up with that behind you. Flick it out, hit the clip, and there we go, plop it in. That was a lot better. Yep, and your bail arm over. Mm -hmm. Put that down. Put it down, tighten up your line a little bit, not a lot. There we That's go. It. Get this ready for you, sir. And the hooks come out as well, even better. <laughs> I want to get out there and catch as many fish as possible. It's becoming a bit competitive. A week ago, would you have ever thought that you would enjoy angling? No. Sitting still, not something I ever do. So, you know, clearing all other thoughts out of my mind and just 
thinking about what I'm doing has been great. I suppose it'd be a great way to just spend the day with your own thoughts. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't want to spend the day with my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone would want to do that. <laughs> Not even me. <laughs> it's uh, all good fun. You can't get any better than that when you're enjoying it and, and doing well. We seem to be catching a lot of fish. So yeah, it's all good. So, side tension, remember to keep it side, line tight. He's yeah. pulling. Keeping that tight line, which we are. And then he's about the right distance now to net. Is he? I can't even see it. Yeah, he's oh, there. <laughs> nice little one again. There we go. As easy as that. <clears throat> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you fish. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Paul, with the feeder fishing, when we're casting out, firstly, it's really important that we cast accurately, and it's very different from when we were using the float yesterday. Now, the float probably only weighs a couple of grams, whereas a fully loaded feeder like this can easily be a couple of ounces. Yeah. So the technique to get it out there is gonna be very different. So I'm just gonna talk you through how we do that. So firstly, we make sure the line's not wrapped around the quiver tip so that we don't embarrass ourselves and either snap the rod or uh, cast it six feet, uh, six feet in front of us. Now, when we're float fishing, very often we just bring the float behind us, send it out all in one movement, okay? With this, with a heavier weight, and the fact we're casting further, we're gonna need to line it up to the far bank. So as I've mentioned to you, you can see there's a single tree there on the far yeah. bank, and that's our marker. Uh -huh. Now we've got the line in the clip set to about 35 meters, which is the distance that we want to fish at, okay? So what we're looking to do is to cast out, make sure the line hits the clip, and drops in, in line with that tree. If it hits the clip and we're in line with the tree, keep landing it in that space, and then obviously we'll be adding more and more bait to that area, we'll concentrate the feeding, and that'll give us the best chance. Okay. So, bring it back behind us, arms nice and high, because obviously that's where our, our power's gonna come from, okay? Then you can see my head, my hands through the rod, and the tree are all in a straight line. That means, that unless I deviate one way or the other, that's the direction it's going in. Yeah. And then when we're happy to do so, just push forward. Hits the clip as it hits on the, the water. On the money, as you're rightly saying. And when we put the rod down, we've got it just taut, which is where our bite indication is gonna come from. There we go. And straight away, long, we're into a fish. <laughs> and, that's the, and that's how it is. If we can just keep landing it in that area, yeah, yeah. that's how quick the bites will come because we've got the concentrated feeding in that area the fish are there waiting for us. If we can land it in that spot, right on their dinner plate, it'll only take a few seconds before that tip rattles round and we're Wasn't into it another 30 one. Seconds, was it? Wasn't it? No, yeah. a few seconds that time, yeah. even better. Brilliant. So should we get this one in? Yeah. And it'll be your turn. Yeah, okay. Top man. <laughs> so Paul, we're gonna get this feeder out there now. Just gonna talk you through what we're gonna do before, okay? So obviously we'd always check the line isn't round the tip. We'd bring the rod back behind us, nice high arms, okay? That makes a real big difference so that we can get that power to push through the cast, okay? And always make sure that when we bring that feeder behind us, we're looking down from our eyes through the rod, straight across that tree on the far side. Oh, no, nope. what happened there? I am having a great time. Um, it's good being with the lads, it's good learning something different. I've never fished before, so sitting and soaking up the knowledge, remembering the processes, and getting that right has, has been challenging. Like I just struggled just now for a little while. I get frustrated very quickly because I just expect to be able to do it. And I, <laughs> obviously, it takes time and practice to be good at anything. That's it, so bringing it back over your shoulder, making sure you're in a straight line with that tree. Arms nice and high, push through hard. Wonderful, okay, so we've got out to the clip. So what we're gonna do is pop the rod on the rest. That's it, don't wind it back, remember, because we need the feeder to, uh, to stay in place. So keep an eye on that tip. Oh, yep, there, you yep, yep. there you go. There you go. Well, that didn't take long, Walshie. Nope. So just take your time, keeping a bend in the rod all the time. 
And it's totally different when you're fishing what probably three or four times as far as you have been up till now you probably notice they don't do a lot when they're out there it's a bit of a dead weight and then as it comes back towards you and it's a tighter line you're obviously naturally starting to pull a little bit harder then and then as you see now that's when the fight begins isn't it yeah they start yeah. to realize that yeah well initially thought i'd lost it that initially. something's wrong yeah well sometimes they'll come back towards you of course but it just goes to show that as soon as we actually got it out there into that area yeah 30 seconds a minute before that tip wrapped round. There we go. Looks like a nice little common you've got there. Lovely. Oh, oh. hey, flying fish. What a moshi. <laughs> right, let's get it loaded back up, get it out there, get you another one. Lovely. We need to practice. Our target is to take four footballing legends and turn them from absolute beginners to experts in just one week. They're not on their own though. They've got four of the best anglers in the country showing them the ropes. The guys are nearly halfway through their training so far and this afternoon it's assessment time. This morning they've been taught the art of the feeder and the bomb, but now Hass, they've got to put that into practice, haven't they? It's time for us to score them. Me and Rob are going to go around, watch each pair. We're going to give four points to our first placed angler and unfortunately the angler that's fourth place will only receive one point. It's going to be an interesting afternoon, that's for sure. Absolutely, so the boys are now going to get back on their boxes into the saddle and show us what they've got. Tell you what, this is a good opportunity for us to get in now. It's assessment time, gentlemen, and I think we, we've just caught you as about to cast out. Don't let us stop you, crack on. Okay. <laughs> well, you never stopped me doing that before, have you? We might be right, on the wrong side on this side here. He, he gets nervous you. when he's got an audience. Well, come, tough. Come out of the way, boys. Hass has, has got to watch out for his hairpiece yeah, going out there. Now. <laughs> oh, he's knocking him out. Ooh. Knocking him out rather than, uh, rather than casting him out. How have you got on today? I think uh, we've caught with a little bit of an edge. A legal edge? It's legal. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I, th I, think, I think we're allowed to do it. Yeah. You think? We don't know what it is yet. <laughs> well, I can't go into too much detail, but it's made a difference. Yeah, see, I think that's actually quite good angling, where they're thinking about an initiative to try and get something right. But uh, we're going to step back, because it's a bit sunny here. So we're going to step back, and I'd just like you to catch us to fish as quickly as you possibly can. Let's go over that way, Hass, so we can get in the shade. No pressure there. <laughs> right, show us what you can do. Here now on the box is Tony Gale, about to take his fourth shot of the day. Full shot. A little bit of a short drop there. Yeah, not bad, he's in the zone there. He's, he's pretty accurate, I think. Casting looks like it's got a lot smoother. Yeah. Have you worked on that this morning, Nick? Yes. Yes, we have worked on that. That was our main mission today, was get some accuracy. Tell you what, he's on already. Oh, Come on, on then, Tony. <laughs> Come on. He's in. How you doing? How you doing? You can't ask for more than that, Mate, boys. You are Sorry, awesome. We haven't got time for interviews. We're fishing, <laughs> eh? <laughs> on, you, on you go. On you go to the learners. Go on. <laughs> the first bit with the, the band fishing, that was a great introduction. And I thought, this is easy, you know, just like, yeah, yeah, I'll pull them out, pull them in, get them out. And all of a sudden we started casting. Obviously, if you muck the first few up, you just feel a little bit of pressure on you. And that pressure thing is what I'm used to at football, what I'm used to at golf when I'm playing golf now, because I play that quite regularly. But I'm not used to it at something that I'm not good at. So it's a little bit more pressure. And it's activating that because there's so many things to do and that's what's got me I think but I love it do you know I love it and uh, oh I love being with him so the angling journey is Nick he, he is my angling journey we've got a lot in common with him other than fishing <laughs> how's that Nick? certainly sir there oh he's getting himself as well yeah. there you look at the size yeah. of that yeah. that's a tank and he's mastered 
He's absolutely mastered landing Smooth. the fish. on playing in London, isn't he? Very impressive, gentlemen, very impressive. <laughs> there you go, boys. And that's how you fish six inches below the surface. Secretly. Be quiet. <laughs> so, a little switch to, to fishing down the edge. So just remember you're fishing at quite close range here, so not too, uh, not too forceful with it. Mr Bartlett and Mr Parker now. Let's have a little look at where they are. But I'm just going to sneak in. You're going to come down as well, Has. So tell us, you're fishing right on the edge now. What's the score down there? Um, well, basically, we're having a bit of a mare fishing out in the middle of the pond. I don't know what they are up to next door. If I stopped hearing their feeder landing in the pond. There we go. Wow. Hey, get in there. By the fact that they'd stopped casting out in the pond, then all you heard was bzzz. I just knew that it was such short contact that they were obviously fishing in the, in the edge. Um, so yeah, just as soon as I knew that, I just started priming, priming the edge. And I did think it had come to that anyway. It's been a bit of a tougher afternoon. We were really consistent this morning with landing better fish regularly. Came back yeah. after lunch and you had a lovely ghosty, but it's been a bit tough since then. It has, yeah. Little, yeah, switch, little switch down the edge has paid off. It has. It's only a lovely. small thing, but there you go. Have a little common well, hooks out in the net, look. Oh, good boy. There we go, I'll get that out of the way and you can pop that one in the keep now with his friends. One. Lovely. How are you finding this method then, Paul? I'm enjoying it because we're actually getting a bit of action. The other one was kind of like, it was, it was painful because we just wasn't getting anything at all. And I got so used to seeing something bobbing on the water that it kept me active because I was aware, I had to be aware and alive. And all of a sudden, something was under, under the water and I was just waiting for a, a waggle on the end of the, um, of the rig, it wasn't really working for me. It's more so because we wasn't catching anything. Just down there, mate. Just make sure you lower it right down. Mm -hmm. That's it, perfect. One nice swoop. That's it, perfect, lower it down. That's it, let your bail arm off. It's looking pretty good down there, but we're gonna be up against it because this session might be caught a little bit short today because it's just started raining. Up there's thunder grumbling in the distance. And it may be today's lesson might finish a little bit early. A little bit of twitch on that tip. Oh, yeah, he's on, he's on, he's on. Nice and steady, mate, nice and steady. Guide him around, don't reel too much. Hold the, make sure your right hand's above him. Yeah. That's Mark's it. really cool, calm and quiet with these bites with him. Only a little one, but it's a fish. We have had an awful lot of small fish today. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Well done, Mr. Parker. Absolutely bang on again. Come on then, Hassel, let's have a look at the star students at the moment then. Frank's on the method still. So how's he going today then? Done really well. He says he finds it a little bit boring compared to the other days because he doesn't have to do as much <laughs> so as he casts out and it goes. So. <laughs> My tension but... span is not very, not very clever. Right, I'm going to watch this closely now just to see it. So, laying the pellet in. Oh, he's not putting the pellet in. Oh, no, he's got his own. He's gone the other way yeah. round, has he? Is that the way you've taught him, Katie? Was he the best? No, we that did that actually, yes. Yeah, yeah, we come with a bit of both. Don't always have to be in. Sometimes you get quicker bites because there's a lot of fish out there. So, sometimes they'll pick it up faster and take it. So, we mix it up a little bit every now and then. He's on the speed method here. Yeah. Right then. Mm -hmm. So, so far, he's the quickest that I've seen loading the feeder. Definitely. Yeah. He's got 500 fish about three yards out in front of him, but he's <laughs> going to go for the horizon. <laughs> oh, look at that for a cast. He's hit his clip lovely. Too much. A little bit hard, yeah. but it's yeah. very bit hard smooth. on himself as well. Yeah. But it's... Too much. But anyway, we'll see how he goes. Yeah. Well, he's spotting we'll it. Line and then... <laughs> I think you're in with a chance there, Frank. Mm. Have you been baiting or are you randomly? Yeah. Have you had bait out on that spot, or is it like randomly wherever? No, we've not put any bait. Oh no, we've, we, we are clipped up. It's obviously bounced a little bit short, but yeah. we haven't put any bait out with a catapult. It's all, it's all gone mm -hmm. out with a method feeder. There we go. We've got one. That side pressure on. He's in. Yeah. Oh, he's the boy, isn't he? He really is. He's on fire. Could be smallest one at day, but we've got one. Yeah, you can't choose what size they are when they pick them up. It is a little. It's only a different. Oh, oh, oh no. commentator's job, curse. I'm saying how well you've done. No. Oh. Oh, it's too small. We don't catch small ones. <laughs> we let them go. Oh. <laughs> Good effort, though. Good effort there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So it's results time now, and the first thing I'll say is, well done everybody once again, you've all learned a reasonable amount throughout the course of the day. Haas, we've had a good conflab about this. We have. You're going to deliver the bad news first, aren't you? He's put me in a very awkward position with a bunch of highly competitive footballers, and I've got to tell you who's come bottom. It was very close between fourth and third place, but the person, unfortunately, in fourth place and scoring one point, I'm going to give to Paul Parker. Now, my rationale, Paul, is that it was a bit of a slower day for you. You weren't a kin or that in favour with the method compared to flight fishing yesterday. So for that reason, and that reason alone, fourth place for you today, but well done, mate. Third place, and again, it is, it, it, I'm not going to make any excuses, but it is quite a close thing. It's quite tough to do it. You've been consistent because you were third yesterday, so it's Paul Walsh and Jules. Now, they're not going to be happy with that at all, because I know how much they are. Paul, it was your <laughs> See, if this was rugby, mate, if this was rugby, we wouldn't have any of this. It's football is stepping up and giving it lip to the refs again. Look, there we go. Now, in second place, scoring three points. Very close again. Always in control. Always took his time. Never looked rushed or out of place. A consummate all-round performance. It's Mr. Frank McAvenny, isn't it? Frank, brilliant angling, really consistent, cast beautifully, loaded the feeder efficiently, had a few little cheeky edges in there, and overall, it was fantastic angling. Well done, Frank. And in first place, and it was a very, very impressive performance this morning, it's Mr. Speed and Mr. Gale. Fantastic. Well done, lads. Well done. If you look at the water, the fish are much, much bigger. And what you've got to do is try and catch one of these monsters. Now they decide where they want to be. So today is about stalking. We're in there with the reeds, we're in there with stinging nettles. We're doing the ugly bit where the fishes are. You got one, Paul? Yep. 